Hi there, it's Paul in Perth here again. And here we are with chassis 18. You might notice that it's actually got the bonnet from chassis 17. That's chassis 17 in the background there. She hasn't been picked up quite yet. And today what we're gonna do is address one of the really common issues, or probably actually the most common issue, with the automatic VL Master 3. And that is that the TCM or the tra um, transmission control module light comes up on the dash and the gears get really hard to shift, like it'll take a long time to drop into drive or reverse, and um, it, it just won't drive particularly well. And I've, I've had people say, say to me, oh, my transmission is broken. It's, it, uh, most of the time, almost always actually, it's not the transmission, it's the transmission control module. So let's have a look under the bonnet. The transmission control module lives under the battery box. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to remove the battery box. So let's get on and let's remove that battery box. All right, so now we're gonna remove this battery box. Now, before I do, I just wanna point out, this car has been in an accident that has bent the whole front end this way. So this corner here, instead of being at 90 degrees like this, it's actually more like at 85 degrees, just because of the accident that this car had. So, it's, your car is not going to look exactly like my car, but I reckon you're smart enough to work it out, okay? Um, I'll just point out, I have had to remove the bottom of my um, air filter box, just because there was too many broken parts in the way it was obscuring. You obviously will have an a, um, air filter box there. So the first thing to do is remove the top of the battery box. So there you go, that's the first part of the job done. The next thing you want to do is remove this um, um, strap that holds down the top of the the battery it's a 10 mil so if you just if you just knock off these little 10 mil nuts here you'll find that this retaining strap comes off so that's out the next thing to do is remove the battery now I want you to remove just loosen off the negative and the positive Get those, get those terminals off, put them out to the side, and you should be able to lift out the battery. So that's now out. Now, what you've got, what you've got to get out next is the, the base of this um, battery um, box. The front pulls up and out. So with that, you can just pull it up and out. And if you look down there, you'll see that there's three 10 mil um, bolts. Can you, can you see these three 10 mil bolts here? Okay. So those need to come out. So grab your 10 mil. One, two, three. Okay, now if I tried to lift this out now, I'd find that there's the electrics over here that are holding in the ECU would get in the way. So I need to take the top off the ECU cover and I need to unplug this ECU. This ECU is engine control unit, in case you don't know. It's sometimes called an ECM, an engine control module. If you stick a flathead in under the white bar, I need my little spectacles for this, you'll find you can pop that up. And if you do the same on the back one, you'll find you can pop that one up there. You don't need to take note of which one fits where because they only fit on one place, okay? So you can just pop them out to the side with no fear that you're actually gonna get it wrong because you actually can't get that one wrong, okay? Now, I know from experience that on a car that's straight, you have a lot of trouble with the battery box hitting this um, back, hitting basically the, this, this sill of the firewall here. Um, because my car is bent, I don't know whether I'm gonna have a harder time, easier time or equal time as you, but I know normally this back corner is quite a very tight um, fit past this sill here. But my car's bent and yours isn't, so we'll just see how, how mine goes. I've just noticed, okay, I need a little trim tool, because I can see down in the bottom here, that little plastic thing is in there, so I think that's, I think we're all clear now. So I should be able to lift this up. I'll tell you what I was going to do. Just for simplicity, I'm going to remove this front panel. Um, I'm not convinced whether you have to or not, but I know that if I do, it's going to be easier. And it'll certainly give you a better view. So 
Let's do that. Come on, baby. All right, so we've taken the front panel out. Like I said, I'm not sure if you have to or not, but it only took 30 seconds, so you might as well. It certainly is gonna make the job a bit easier. And now I should find that I can lift the bottom of the battery box up and out. Okay, so that has come up, up and out. Now I went forward lip up and out. I have it other, on other cars had to go back lip up and out. But one way or the other, you have to get that battery, the bottom of the battery box out. And that's the battery box out. We'll now head to the next part of the video. All right, so now that we've got the battery box out, we can get down to where the transmission control module is. Now, I didn't realize this, but because of the way this car has been bent in the accident, you've actually, if you come forward, you've actually got a really good view of the transmission control module, much better than you would have if the car wasn't bent. So if you look there, that's actually the TCM there. So it's bolted on top of the transmission, okay? So first, first thing we, we would want to do to get it out is we would put our little flathead screwdriver in there and we would take that, that off. We would take this off the top of that post. And then at that point, there are three 10 mil um, uh, bolts that are holding it on. Now, normally you can't get to it with a tool, but because of the way this has been bent, I can. So I'm gonna put my 10 mil on there and that's one of my three out. That normally takes a lot longer. Right, now the other two are a lot harder to get to. So this will be pretty ungracious television um, and you won't, okay, if you imagine, so imagine that's the TCM there. We've just taken out the bolt there. There's another one at the middle there and there's another one here, okay? So you won't be able to perceive this, but I'm, right now I've got my 10 mil on top of that one that's, oh no, I've fallen off. Okay. Right, I'm on it now. So that's where the, the second one is. That's it cracked. All right, and I'll um, see if I'm... Oh yeah, no, that's coming, coming off my hand quite nicely. Okay. Sorry, I know this isn't great television. Welcome to my armpit, by the way. All right, so... That's the second one out. Now we've just got the third one, which is right at the rear. Um, and okay that's cracked nicely that's good now as i remember this one at the rear is actually rather than being through a hole it's actually through like a like a c so yeah you can so you don't even have to remove that all the way because it just sits in this one there so there's your three bolts you've got that one that one and that one and if you remember this one was a special one because that one had the a little connector on top to um keep the the wires all tidy so at this point you've got to make a choice of how you're going to, this has failed. So you've got a choice of three things to do to fix it. You can either go to a wrecker, quote your part number, and that's the part number on the side. So this particular one is an L552 189E1F. This particular car is an SP25. And because I've done a few, I can tell you that's an SP25 part number. The ones on the two liters tend to start with LFAE, okay? But whatever it says, you've, your choice is three. You either go to a wrecker and get a working one, or you take your failed unit out and you send it to a reconditioner. And I'm gonna put the details for a reconditioner down in the um, description notes. There is one in Australia that I quite like. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do hear good things about them. So you send your failed unit away, they send it back reconditioned and guaranteed. Your third option is to buy them brand new from Mazda. And when you do that, you're gonna find that the, the price of these brand new is eye-watering. So you're probably not gonna to wanna to do that. And anecdotally, I've heard that the reason that these fail is a manufacturing fault. So I would discourage you from buying them brand new from Mazda because you'll be replacing something that's been um, badly engineered with something else that's been badly engineered. The anecdotal story that I hear from the reconditioners is that they didn't use um, either enough solder or any solder internally within the electronics here. And the reason that they fail is eventually the joints of the internal electronics, um, which are initially, I think, are punched through like a, 
like a, a metal a metal um, sheet or something. Eventually, they just oxidise and they stop making contact, and that's why you get the error codes. So what I've anecdotally heard is the reconditioners, the main thing they do is they resolder these. And once they're resoldered, and they re would probably replace some failed resistors and transistors and whatever. And then they fix them, they give them back. So your choices were, go to a wrecker and get one, take it to a reconditioner, get it reconditioned. Third thing is um, buy a brand new one from Mazda. Reinstalling it is just the opposite of uninstalling it. I have heard, I have seen online and have heard of people that do one variation though. So you could put it right back where it came from. The variation that I've seen is that some people will use cable ties and they'll cable tie it to the brake lines. Now the reason that they do that is because where it's mounted normally is on top of the transmission. Transmissions get hot and, and electronics don't like getting hot. By putting it on the firewall, you're creating a lot more opportunity for airflow, firstly, but secondly, you haven't bolted it to the side of a transmission that's getting hot, right? In spite of the name that this is called a firewall, it ain't actually on fire. It's actually quite cool. So it is a decent place to mount it. So if you want to go with a variation, you would just pop it there, cable tie it in and plug it in and you'd be done, all right? So that's how you, uh, that's how you replace a, a transmission control module on a BL. It's, if I've helped you, I want you to do three things for me. Please click like, please click subscribe, leave me a comment, tell me what country you're in, share some love, and don't forget to share your knowledge. Thanks a lot from Paul in Perth, okay?